What an exciting game of football we had last night with so many touchdowns and fun things for fantasy football. Like Latavius Murray. Should you pick him up in your waivers? The old man? Or should you go with Kenyon Drake? No, let's do wide receivers. There's a great group of wide receivers for waiver wires today. We're going to talk about the young stud rookies. We're going to talk about the old men. And we're getting into some news, some bad injuries, all sorts of wild and wacky things on today's goose-filled episode. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, October 18th, a waiver show. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, back with you. We watched some football last night, and, uh, well, the trend continues. It was really weird. We are sitting on 110 fewer touchdowns than in 2020. Wow. And close to 100 fewer touchdowns than last year. So we, uh, we're we watching the kickers kick. I mean, heck of, heck of a performance by Hopkins. It was. He was in pain. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely in pain. Or he just wanted to look like the toughest man out there. I think that's what it was, Mike. I think he oh, he Paul was in Pierce the Pierce style. He was I, in the locker room thinking, "How can I? How can I become the star of this show?" Just saying, like he was kicking it with velocity, very accurately, and then would fall down. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, if I were a kicker in a primetime game, I, I might try and do the same thing. I will say this: I would 100 percent <laughs> do that. I would want no NFL player would do that, but I would absolutely yeah. do that. Uh, I'm we, a true hero. <laughs> ah, my hamstring. I'll fight through it. Put me in, coach. I can I'm, look. I can really kick this ball. Don't worry. Most guys would not kick That's that right, ball. Of course. Uh, we have waivers today. Would. Welcoming some people to the fold. <laughs> quarterback streamers. Uh, a reminder. I think we have the giveaway still going. Is that right, Brooksy? Oh yeah. Footclangiveaway.com. Assigned Waddle, Hertz, and DJ Moore jersey. A virtual studio tour. Check it out at FootClanGiveaway.com. It's free to enter. Get in there. Yeah. yeah. Then you can, uh, you know, check out Deucer's Alley. She said, you know. We'll, we'll get the riff. Smells bad back there. We'll you get have the riff off out. Sign a, riff Roth. Riff Roth. Riff Roth. You have to sign a waiver, obviously, for that yeah, tour. Yeah, an, an NDA. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Thank you for reviewing it. Thank you for supporting us throughout the year. As we try to get you that hash, hashtag FootClan title. <laughs> That's right. We got championships on the way. It doesn't matter if there are fewer fantasy points being scored this year. That just means your opponent has fewer fantasy points to score. I scored fewer than Mike, that's for sure. You uh, did. We had Justin Herbert, who was boosted to plus 100 on a... Uh, Say, are you are you feeling as good as DraftKings this morning? No, no. <laughs> I He had thrown a touchdown pass, at least one, in 26 consecutive games before last night. It goes back to his rookie year when he hadn't thrown at least one. He attempted 57 passes. They completed 37 of them. They looked, in at least in the first half, essentially like fully stoppable and yet unstoppable. I mean, they they I don't know how many third downs they picked up. It was all short stuff. It was at least in in the first half where I was like really paying attention to this. It was hilarious of. Everything was a short pass. The Broncos kept blitzing, but it's like your your blitz is completely meaningless if we just keep dumping it down five yards uh, f on the field and we keep getting these first downs. But it 
it never turned into points. Well, that's been the Broncos all year. I mean, they just don't well, give up. I was talking about the char- – oh. They don't, they don't give up touchdowns. They, I mean, One, well, one yeah. passing touchdown on the year. It's the Broncos on both sides of the ball. So, I see your confusion, Mike. Yes. They do not <laughs> give up touchdowns, and they do not score touchdowns. They are like – the Broncos hate touchdowns. It's really one of their least favorite things. I, I will be honest with you. I thought maybe when that game started the way that it did, 10 for 10, Russell Wilson, maybe it was over. Maybe the fears, yeah. uh, all of the, the, the financial investment, all of the question marks, I thought maybe it was over. It was not close to over. He ended up going 5 for 18, I think, on the remainder of the game. Yeah, we had uh, Warren Sharp tweeted out, the number two highest paid quarterback in the NFL in the final 37 minutes, three completions at 1.4 yards per attempt, three sacks. That was the second half plus overtime. And F 15 yards. 15 yards. Three completions for 15 yards what? in second half and overtime combined. Cortland what? Sutton, two for 14. Jerry Judy was three for 54. Uh, if you want a silver lining on the offensive side, yeah. Greg Gregory. Dulcich. Greg Dulcich, who I find delightful. Dude, he's great. He is great. Um, looks very good. Almost had another one. Uh, two for 44 and a touchdown. I I think the story – I mean, there's going to be a scapegoat that's not Russell Wilson at some point for the Broncos offense, and it will be Nathaniel Hackett. He is likely – going to be the one let go at the end of this year if this offense doesn't figure it out. It is inept. The play calling is inept. Um, the play design, you know, Russ is running for his life. Yeah, but, you know, now he's got a hamstring. Last week it was yeah. a shoulder. Now it's a hamstring. Uh, if I played like that, I would have pulled something. Oh, yes, for sure. Latavius Murray ends up being the main back. This is one of the worst <laughs> storylines of the what? entire game. We were hoping that there was a – an injury that yeah. caused the problem. Well, but he was questionable. Yeah, already. he's been on the injury report, and that didn't stop him any of the other games, but maybe it came to fruition of the, the injury just got too much in this game. But Melvin Gordon himself came out and said, like, I'm fine. Yeah, he was fine. He, I could have helped, he said. He, he could have. He could have helped. You can run on the Chargers. They needed points. They needed He's not – I mean, this is, what, this is what my fear was. And, yeah. and I thought I was an idiot to go Eno Benjamin over Melvin Gordon after what Eno did. Melvin, three for eight. And oh. Latavius Murray took his lunch money. The guy who – Off the street. The, the guy, Latavius Murray off the street took the job of a player who kept stealing work from Javante Williams when Williams back – when he was actually healthy. I mean, like, what is – it is what a dis is going it on? It is a dysfunction uh, extravaganza in Denver right now, and, and they finally paid for it. They almost won the game yeah. anyways. Yeah, they but, almost did. Because their defense is awesome. I would be so angry if I was a defensive <laughs> player for the Broncos. You just took a great Chargers offense and didn't give up 20 points, and you can't. It's like the Cardinals. The Cardinals yeah. offense can't move the ball. The Denver offense can't move the ball. And honestly, on the, on the other side right now, without – uh, Keenan Allen, Justin Herbert is not a prolific fantasy quarterback. You know, last year you had a lot of uh, explosive games. The first two games this year looked good. The last three have not. Austin Eckler has to catch 10 passes. That's too many. That's too many for the game to be going the way you want it to go. Uh, Patrick Sertan shut down Mike Williams, two for 17. And Josh Palmer, again, 12 targets, nine catches, but for 57 yards. I mean, well, this was just dinks and dunks and... And a, a, skunks. You also had 150 plus yard, uh, penalty yards from the Denver Broncos. Uh, yeah, it was gross. That was the uh, I, don't, I can't remember his name, but that rookie who just just pi after pi after pi. It was uh, it was pu. Yes, yeah. but I'm saying like a, a lot of the the Herbert yards are just that are they're negated and yeah. they're turned into to PI yards. Yeah, they really need Keenan Allen back. He will return at some point and I think that will help um Herbert quite a bit. I have one final thing to say because you brought up how the 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 Broncos are very similar to the Cardinals, not giving up a lot of points and still not being able to score doing nothing on offense. Uh it, it does look like December 18th we are going to get the Denver Broncos oh, versus no. the Arizona Cardinals. I will take the under. 
If it's at 10 points, the immovable take... object versus the, the immovable object. Yes. <laughs> well, let's watch these two rocks <laughs> stare at each other. I can't wait for it to be 56 to 51 or something. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we do have some news. Yeah. The Chiefs restructured Travis Kelsey's contract, uh, spinning up a thousand rumors for <laughs> potential trades. Well, well, well. Who yeah. are you trying to acquire? The world wants them to acquire DJ Moore uh, at wide receiver, which they could definitely use. Uh, they also want them to acquire Christian McCaffrey. How they would do that? The uh, My buddy, uh, who's a diehard Chiefs fan, he thinks it, it is more than likely an edge rusher. Which is boo. not, yeah, no, I, I said boo. I said, how dare you? How dare you put that in the world? I, we all want it to be a wide receiver or specifically DJ Moore, but they're they're going to do something. So that's that's the big takeaway as we get to sit back and wait for some sweet news. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals Hollywood Brown expected to miss six weeks with a foot fracture. It was initially reported as season ending. Now they're saying it will not require surgery. Um, it, it it's good news at least for you know your dynasty outlook that he doesn't have a sure. second list Frank surgery. You know, can you play him in seven weeks from now? No. Uh, risky business. I mean, you, you there is the chance that he's relevant at some point for a game or two, but yeah, week twelve will be the earliest based on that timeline. They have a week thirteen bye week, so I would doubt they would bring him back right before the bye. You're probably looking at week 14. That is the final week yeah. before fantasy playoffs. He is someone that if you don't have an IR, I would probably try to trade to someone who wants to stash him. I, I don't, I'm not looking forward to benching him. Now, if your record is phenomenal and you look bound for the playoffs, maybe you hold on to him. Obviously, you hold on to him if you've got an IR spot, but it's, uh, it's bad news for a lot of people, for Marquise Brown, for... Kyler and the hope that you finally got to see this Arizona Cardinals don't, offense at full strength. Don't worry. Oh, that's don't worry. True. We've they got, fixed it. We got it fixed. <laughs> Robbie Anderson. Right. No, they didn't sign him off of waivers where he was sure to be. They traded a couple of picks to get not one, but two. Yeah. Although I loved the comment on Twitter where. They said he got traded for a 10th grader because it's 2024, 20, 2025 picks, I believe. Oh, there's two blings. I forgot. Uh, so the Cardinals attempt to <laughs> fix the situation. Look, you go from just Hollywood to DeAndre Hopkins and Robbie Anderson, and their offense already stunk. So, um, yeah, we may see Robbie Anderson and Hopkins on Thursday night football in primetime. Yeah, Sweet. That'll go well. Sweet. Randall Cobb, two to four weeks, high ankle sprain. I can't believe that. After the way... That it wasn't broken? Yeah, it was the way the injury looked, the way he was carted off, the towel on the head. So, I mean, that's great news for Cobb, but I, two weeks, is that's got to be up. Yeah, he'll he'll probably miss the next month, which when we're talking waivers, you're Christian Watson, yep. uh, Robert Tunyon. Those are really good options now. Steve Wilkes says uh, the hope is to designate Sam Darnold to return. Not uh, sure if he'll be ready to play yet. Let's go. Because he hasn't seen him. Wilkes says he hasn't seen him, so he doesn't know if he's ready. Yeah. Um, You'd think they'd follow that closer they, as the They team. probably should. Also, we re I, I need Sam Darnold to, <laughs> to be coming back to this team. Uh, my Christian McCaffrey, my sweet, sweet CMC here with Jacob Eason. Not feeling very good. Thursday night, breakdown on tomorrow's show. We got initial practice reports from the Cardinals and Saints. The good news for the Saints is that Olave was not even listed on the report. Uh, so he should be playing on Thursday. Michael Thomas didn't practice. Jarvis Landry didn't practice. Adam Troutman didn't practice. So we'll see if Taysom Hill gets featured on Thursday against the Cardinals. No James Conner practicing, Darrell Williams not practicing, and Eno Benjamin now. Conner's still day-to-day, -day, though. Limited. Yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. That's what, that's what, that's what Cliff If the NFL said. has taught me anything, it's that day-to-day -day can last for weeks. <laughs> Fun fact, Sam oh. Darnold is making $18 million this year. Oh. 
So good that's, for you, Sam. Yeah. It's a lot. Get, uh, him get and Matt money. Rule getting a lot of money to sit on their keisters. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Well, we got our introduction to the bye weeks last week, and this week it's more painful because oh, the yeah. Bills, the Rams, the Vikings, the Eagles, Yikes. No. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, no, no. Cooper Jefferson. Cup this week, no Jefferson. I mean, you, you look at Diggs, Jefferson, Cup, A.J. Brown. Yeah, that's wild. Higby, Goddard, two of the starting yeah. tight ends, and then Josh Allen, Hurts, two of the – Th three best quarterbacks in fantasy. This is this is a brutal week. So uh, we'll dive into the waiver wire, see what wide receivers we're welcoming to the fold. A reminder, on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, if you go to the rankings tab, there is a new waiver wire rankings page that helps you get organized with your waiver claims, whether you're in a fab league or you have a waiver priority league that is a resource you can use. We are always adjusting it. Like when, you know, Latavius Murray decides to be the feature back on a team. He just joined over the guy that was like Mike said, had a big role the last couple of years, got on the wrong side of Nathaniel Hackett for some reason. But let's start with the wide receiver position. Uh, where are you guys at? Is Wandale at the tippy top of your list? He Wandale is, Robinson, wide receiver for the Giants. He is for me as if you're talking about someone that you don't necessarily have to start this week. If you have to start him, I think there are better options this week. But Wandale is my number one name. And the reason why is because the opportunity going forward for him to be the number one wide receiver for this offense seems legitimate. You have to go back in time and remember he opened the season as a starter, as a rookie. Mm -hmm. Week 1 in in training camp, like he had already won the role with Brian Dayball and he comes out week 1 and gets injured. This was his first time back. He only played I think like 34% of snaps was not a was not fully integrated into their packages and yet while he was on the field, he was targeted he had 23% uh, of the snaps. Okay, e even even fewer. And the thing is, is is he was really good whenever you, you saw him. He scored a touchdown. He didn't do a ton, but enough to where it was like, oh, Wandale's active. Wandale's back. He's healthy. Kadarius Toney, he is now, he's, he's torn seven hamstrings this season. Yes. And so I don't believe Kadarius Toney will be back anytime soon. He isn't the guy that this regime picked. The, he's been in the doghouse for everybody he's played for. Wandale was their hand selected guy, and all he's got to beat out is you know a uh, Richie James, who he beat out in preseason, to have an opportunity to be the number one target in this offense. So going forward, he is my number one pickup if I'm looking for a rest of season hopeful number one. Now, why wouldn't you just play him against Jacksonville this week? Oh, I compared would. to the other options. I would, but what when I said that he wouldn't be my number one if I had to start him this week, it's because of Alec Pierce. So you would Alec Pierce is your number one. Alec Pierce against Tennessee, they're thirty first in schedule adjusted against wide receivers. They are, you know, Alec Pierce has been playing a big play well. guy. He's playing yeah. well. He's he's already more established than Wandale. Honestly, the, like wide receiver, it's a great week for wide receivers, and all you got to do is just look for the rookie wide receivers and then scoop them all up. Which includes uh, Jamison Williams as a stash. Yeah, still long Christian term. Watson as a, uh, I think, a, a desperate dart throw with the hamstring and his lack of involvement down the field. They seem to run. He's like the end around guy yeah. right now. But um, Tyquan but Thornton had two touchdowns and looks like he's getting more involved. That one's tough for like multiple reasons. One, they're already talking about, oh, do you have a quarterback controversy in New England? Oh, get out With of here. Zappi versus Mac Jones. Two, Stop Jacoby it. and Devontae Parker seem to be val just as valuable as Tyquan Thornton. And I don't know if Thornton is the physical specimen that is going to dominate targets at some point in the near term, although he is very fast. He's crazy he fast. sub 4-3. This he, guy was the fastest, right, at the combine this year? Yes. I think that is correct. He only played 57% of the snaps. 
Got five targets, three carries. So they're I, blowing people out of the water right he's now. He's very interesting, and, I, I believe. And he's getting manufactured touches. I believe yeah. he had a rushing touchdown two weeks ago as well. When you do an end around with a guy no, who just is this week. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, when when you do an end around with a guy who is sub four three, yeah. it's a different level of speed. It's kind of like that Tyree kill speed where you, defenders just can't catch you. And so so would you look at Rondale Moore as a start this week? Yeah, Rondale Moore. He's still at, he's at the top of my list. He is rostered in more than half of leagues, but he's just he's very involved. He's not uh, like I don't mind if you're if you want to go with the long term approach of Wandale. Alec Pierce of going for ceiling because by the end of the season, those guys could turn into something special. They, ha I think they have that ability and that opportunity, but Rondale, it, since he moved into the slot, you know, against Philadelphia two weeks ago, eight targets this past week against Seattle, 10 targets. It didn't turn into a lot, six for 49, but he's going to be involved. And uh, now that you have Hollywood out, like when, when they go into a two wide receiver set, it's probably Hopkins and Rondale Moore. And then when they go to three, Robbie Anderson slash A.J. Green and then Rondale Moore will be back in the slot. So he's he, to me, is a, is safe if you really, really need some points right now. Did you guys see Cliff Kingsbury said he's open to giving up play calling? Yeah. He said, whatever helps, I'm, I'm open to anything that will help us win. So why aren't you stepping away? <laughs> That's my question. If you're really open to anything that will help the Cardinals win, leave the team. Graciously bow out, leave the team, and say, "I want us to win." And so I'm going to step aside and let them hire a an NFL head coach. <laughs> uh, Robbie Anderson, are you interested? That was actually for Cliff leaving. The no, team. that was for Robbie. Oh you, yeah, you know loves Robbie. Robbie. I'm, wow, I'm, this guy loves Robbie. I'm, I'm, I am actually. I'm in. I'm 100 percent in on picking him up and seeing what happens. The Cardinals need wide receivers. AJ Green is not the answer and Hollywood is out. They gave up two picks to get him. So like as in they knew they needed help. Robbie Anderson was going to hit the waiver wire. Like he was that was going to happen. It was done after the explosion in Carolina, but they didn't want to risk not getting him, so they prioritized trading away two future picks for Robbie Anderson. So he is going to play. He's still tall, he still has speed. Maybe there's something there. Yeah, I, I, he's going to slot into the Hollywood Brown role, which ironically is going to be not what Hollywood Brown was playing. Hollywood Brown was kind of playing the DeAndre Hopkins, yep. stay on the left side of the, the, the field, run the route bush. But this means with Hopkins there, you should be able to open up deep targets for Robbie Anderson. We don't know if anything for the Cardinals is going to work. Kyler's deep ball, any passes over 10 yards have been atrocious so far this season. But it is worth a pickup because last year, Kyler was one of the best deep ball throwers in the league. That was with DeAndre Hopkins on the field. So DeAndre Hopkins coming back, Robbie Anderson taking the you know the top off the defense, you very well could have some good games ahead for Robbie. I am fine picking him up, putting him on a very low waiver claim, a very cheap fad bid, yep. and just waiting and seeing what you have with the Hopkins uh, offense. The... Matchup this week for Brandon Ayuk is very good. It's Kansas City. They're going to need to throw the ball a lot. Uh, schedule adjusted against quarterbacks the 31st, so Jimmy G is going to have an opportunity. He had 11 targets. It was 8 for 83, two touchdowns. Um, do you have any interest in chasing what Brandon Ayuk did this past week? I do have a little bit of interest. I think that you could do worse than grabbing him if you need to start because what we saw when they were down to – when the when – the, 49ers were down to the Falcons. They really did turn into a, like, we've got a pass-to-catch-up team. You don't expect them to just be dominating the Kansas City Chiefs. You think that the Chiefs are going to be able to score on them. I know they've got a good defense, but if that happens again, if the Chiefs can somehow do what the Atlanta Falcons did and get up on the 49ers, I think you're, you're going to have a team throwing the ball a lot, and Brandon Ayuk does match up very well against the Chiefs. They have a very favorable schedule moving forward. Uh, as well for the wide receiver would you, position, you're, you're probably would you drop DJ Moore for him? Who? Uh, yeah, the, the the hard part for DJ Moore is just that that small, yeah. small glimmer of hope that he would be traded to Kansas City. Uh, I would say for IU, more than likely, you yeah. would have to trade for him. Like, there's a it's just a small, tiny bit of leagues where he's actually on the wire. It is so funny. DJ Moore should be punted off the bridge. 
He is a worthless commodity as a Panther. But, man, if you throw him but, off the bridge and happens? then he gets traded, you're like, oh, no, there was gold. There was gold in the yeah. pants I just threw in the dump. I forgot to take the gold out of my pockets. The old uh, the, the Bitcoin. Yeah, the drive. Bitcoin in the in the city. Which, is, which is funny because the idea of him getting traded and somehow acclimated and somehow good on a new oh, team. impossible. Not going to happen. But we can dream. Jets wide receivers. Will you cut them all? Would you hang on to Garrett I, Wilson? I'd still hold on to Garrett Wilson, but Elijah Moore – can hit the water. Curtis what? Samuel, Jahan Dotson. I'm 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 gonna hold those guys. Or as many said, Curtis Samuel. Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, I'm gonna hold on to them as Carson Wentz, who I've disliked for many many years. He's <laughs> he's out. He was playing hurt. So now, if anything, you have, in my opinion, close to a lateral move at the quarterback position, but a guy who's actually currently healthy. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. Looks like we didn't mention the uh, Heineke should be the starter for Washington. Correct. Yeah, because yeah, uh, uh, Carson Wentz will miss a bunch of time with the uh, the busted hand. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back with some running back waiver pickups. All right, who are we welcoming into the fold at the running back position this week, Jason? It's the old man. I, it's, I guess. Is it's, it the old man? I The old man? Old man I think plural. we're talking about Kenyon Drake and Latavius Murray. Oh, I as, thought Fred Jackson was coming back. I, I wish. <laughs> the depth chart assassin. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right now you have two elder statesmen. Say who, the names again because I might have talked over them. Kenyon Drake running back for the Baltimore Ravens. And Latavius Murray running back for the Denver Broncos. These are two f great fantasy assets over the last decade who have quietly left relevance and now find themselves in a situation where they could be back. Both of them have really good matchups this week. To me, if I had to pick one of them for a start, yeah, I got bye weeks, I've got injuries. I lean Kenyon Drake. Just because we don't know the situation with Melvin Gordon. If, if if next week comes out Melvin Gordon's a starter, that wouldn't shock me. We just don't know how that's going to work. Kenyon Drake is dealing with J.K. Dobbins at, in a rotation, and J.K. Dobbins' knee is acting up. It, it, it According to John Harbaugh, it locked up at mid-game, and so he that didn't really play. That bad. Yeah. It, tightened up. T tightened up, uh, sure. That, not locked up. Okay. Okay. I That's thought right. Jason had seen something new because I'd heard the tightened up, but locked yeah. up is locked up sounds much worse. It just tightened up, <laughs> like the the key turned a little, but it wasn't fully locked. Um, <laughs> the point here is, you know, you've got a, a a player dealing with this knee injury that has, you know, you need rest and recovery to make it better. Um, the matchup against Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland has given up multiple rushing touchdowns, like it's candy on halloween to to running backs and so good the, current reference the match yeah i mean it's october baby so i i think Kenyon drake is actually someone you could start this week and end up with 10 plus fantasy points at running back and that's not easy to find on the waiver i think i'd personally i think i'm still more inclined to pick up eno and play him sure. than i if am Kenyon there, drake sure. against the saints yeah at home against the saints with all the work Mike mentioned Gus Edwards is ready to come back. Now, I, a lot of it depends on – I mean, this is a tough gamble, right? Because you have to spend a lot of fab or at least a decent amount to pick up Kenyon Drake. You know, last week it was Deion Jackson, the last-minute ad, right? He, he cost about 15 fab in our league. Kenyon Drake's probably going to cost you that, yeah. if not a little bit more, after what he did last week. And I know the matchup's great, but I don't know if Dobbins is playing – and healthy, and I don't know if Gus is playing in healthy right now. And Justice Hill, too. And Justice Hill. So you have to make a kind of a decision here where it's, you know, you could pay for him and not get it. You know, not get the Kenyon Drake you're paying for. Yeah. I, That's it, where I'm nervous. I'm super nervous about Kenyon Drake of, is is he truly the guy? So, uh, But I'm also nervous on Latavius Murray. You know, like, it's a disaster in Denver. That was a whole mess. We could get news later on today that the coaching staff said we felt Melvin Gordon wasn't good to go. Our medical staff said we we needed to hold Melvin Gordon out or his injury could oh, get but worse. But they already came out and said specifically it had nothing to do with that. They they already came out and said no injury. He they, was benched. I'm just saying that they they could they could change their tune. And I I'm just saying I don't know. Like I think that both of these guys are a trap. 
in terms of do not I wouldn't burn my priority for either of those two guys. I wouldn't pay a huge amount of my fab to get them. I'm, those I'm in on I the desire. Tavis. Are you? Yeah, because he's looked good. I mean, he looked good in New Orleans. He looked good last night relative to what was going on on the offensive side of the football. 15 for 66 is not bad. He looked fine and yeah. they don't believe in Melvin Gordon. Apparently. You know, we already saw this the first time they missed uh, uh, Javante. We saw a lot of Mike Boone, and we saw Gordon struggle, and then we've seen Gordon fumble. Like, he was in the doghouse before last night. I I just don't yeah. have the faith. I, like, I, Latavius could be the starter for the Broncos for the rest of the year. That That's, could actually yeah, happen. It could. That will not happen with Kenyon Drake or Eno. What so the, I guess I'm going to reorder that. Okay, Latavius at the top? Yeah, I'd go Latavius, and then I would go Eno, and uh, then I'd go... But does your confidence let you spend the 20-plus percent of your fab? If I need a running back, I'm willing to spend up to 20%. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 will, I will echo that the long-term best option is Latavius Murray. I have such a difficult time thinking that he's just going to make Melvin Gordon bench the rest of the season. Though I think it'll end up being a timeshare. It's funny. Latavius is two starts this year, 19 and 26 at the running back position. Um, but he was 26th? Yeah, he was 26th wow, with Ryan. last night's performance. For 15 for 66? Yeah, I mean, he's, he was 4.4 a carry last night. He was no, 5.2 his first game. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not talking about that metric. I'm saying that amount of fantasy points was a top 26 yeah, running back? He did not score seven fantasy points in half PPR. That's what's yeah, that's going on with fantasy football. Melvin, Melvin Gordon could legitimately be toast. He could. He could be done. He's 3.7 this year on the ground. Um, if you spent up on him, you're, you're at least biting your nails. For sure. Uh, Deion Jackson last week was the uh, late starter for the Colts when we found out that Taylor was not going to play. He caught 10 passes. Uh, it was 12 for 42 and a touchdown on the ground. They play Tennessee. Now, Tennessee, I believe, is the most difficult matchup right now for running backs, which was not what we thought the first time that the Colts played Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I mean, at I, least in points against. So the the Tennessee Titans are much better against running backs than the rest of the positions as far as defensively. Right now, schedule adjusted, they're thirteenth, so it's not it's not a brutal matchup. I would say that so there's about fifty percent of leagues that Deion Jackson is still available, and I would certainly you know try to pick him up in case Jonathan Taylor who you you might not need to spend anything on Deion Jackson if he's out there because people will assume that Jonathan Taylor's coming back. I assume Jonathan Taylor's coming back, but if they keep him out another week, I think people will spend up on Deion Jackson. Really not oh, yeah. knowing if he's even going to play? Well, I mean it's a, it's the same story as Kenyon Drake. I mean he had a monster game. Well, you know Kenyon Drake's going to play. Like if Jonathan Taylor plays, if Jonathan Taylor's active, Deion Jackson is not someone he'll be started in 0% of leagues. Like you you're not going to start Deion Jackson as the backup to an act of Jonathan Taylor, whereas Kenyon Drake, you'll start, you know, with if they say, oh, Dobbins is good to go, you could still start uh, Drake because his role shouldn't change much. You expect he only him had to be 10 in a timeshare. carries. Share. No, I know. You you expect him to be in a timeshare either way, is my point. But Deion Jackson, what I mean, before before Jonathan Taylor went down, what, did, what was Deion Jackson's well, Deion, high usage mark? Two? It was not. I mean, he's had to climb the depth chart, which – Part, partially through injury, but the biggest question for me is Deion Jackson left the game with a quad injury. Is is Deion Jackson actually healthy? Because uh, if he's healthy, then I'm interested in, in picking him up, but uh, underneath those other two players. Some stash alert players, by the way. Gus Bus. Yes. You could pay attention to him. Kyron Williams, running back for the Rams. Yes. I am... I'm less comfortable with him ascending the depth chart just because of their unfortunate acquisition of Malcolm Brown to be involved in that in that package of running backs. Like, there's no world that I see that Kyron is the guy, but it, Mike does see that. Yeah, it's, this is definitely a this is a deeper uh, deeper roster, fourteen plus player uh, league that. Again, Kyron Williams, week one, we were told, like, right before the game, watch out for Kyron. He's going to be on the field far more than you expect. Gets hurt on the first play. So, it's just – we don't he, – he's not ready to go yet, so this is a longer-term thing. 
The Rams are on by, so you may not have to even prioritize Kyron this week. This is just this is a just just planting the uh, the worm in your brain that pay attention to that name. Yeah, and to go back to the Colts for one second, the the pickup that we might be forgetting about is Naeem Hines. Uh, I just looked at the practice report. He was uh, limited on Wednesday, Thursday, full participant Friday. He's in the concussion protocol, so he he very well might be back. If Deion Jackson, he he did leave the game with the right. with the quad injury. If Jonathan Taylor's not back, it, it probably is going to be Naeem Hines, assuming he clears a concussion protocol, which based on his current trajectory, a full participant in practice uh, this last week, he very well might be there ready to go and be the dude. Any other names in terms of a pickup at the running back position you guys want to mention from the list? I mean, this is just we're, – we're almost halfway through the season. This is when you – if you have the bench space, you should be stashing – the high upside current backups, you know, of uh, Jalen Warren is interesting. Joshua Kelly of the Chargers is is interesting. Uh, Samaje P. Ryan, Bengals. P. Ryan, Rashad White. Joshua Kelly. I don't know what happened yesterday. It was it went from last it's week. It was a lot of Sony. Yeah, it was so it was Sony was gone and Joshua Kelly was a backup this week. It was reversed. So I I don't know that you could trust okay. either. That's fair. Can we talk about these Christian McCaffrey rumors for sure, a minute? Sure, let's do it. That's fun. Uh, the Rams and 49ers implicated in potential CMC trade, according to NBC Sports Edge Football. On Twitter just now, um, I don't know what implicated means. That sounds like a crime. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're not going to be trading him. Maybe they're just taking him. I don't know how the Rams get him. They... Or without a first round pick, if if Carolina holds to their word of saying we're not going to move McCaffrey unless you give us a one, which the, the the Panthers I don't think have to fire sale. You can keep the team you have, get a get a franchise a potential franchise quarterback next year, and still have like a lot of good players on your team. So I agree that I I think it should take a lot to get Christian McCaffrey, and but the Forty ers they, I think, have oh, – oh, man, where are they with their picks, too, after well, the, the Trey Lance trade? The thing you want if you're the Panthers are two division mates fighting for sure. your running back. Because Cleveland – or, sorry, the Rams and the 49ers, they both have massive need at the running back position. Right. Um, Elijah Mitchell is not trustworthy whatsoever in terms of being a back you can rely on for a playoff push if you're the 49ers. And the Rams have – you know, they don't have anybody right now that they can trust so at least from the Panthers perspective that seems like a good situation um, Buffalo has been reported as a possible team but uh, at least according to one report they want to keep their cap outlook clean because they have to re-up a lot of stars on their roster so spending money on a running back when you're winning and you have a few probably not going to be the the place he lands the NFL trade deadline is November 1st so yes. Tuesday, November 1st, 4 p.m. Eastern. So we have a couple weeks here, but could be some fireworks. Let's dive into the tight end position and see who you're welcoming to the fold. There are some interesting names based on what happened last week. Let's start with the two uh, players that kind of had their first relevant games of the season. Robert Tunyon, 10 for 90 against the Jets. Dawson Knox, 3 for 37 and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Going into the bye week. Right. So you can't start him right away. Would you add – is Knox somebody that you would stash? I no, mean, no. Knox is not someone I would stash. I know that he's uh, a talented guy on the Bills offense, but this is his first game of relevance, and he had three targets in the game. Going into the bye week, him getting a touchdown in this game doesn't say to me, I have to hold him through a bye week for the future. Tunyon, on the other hand, with, with Randall Cobb being gone, yeah. 12 targets – in this game for Tunyon, he becomes far more interesting, far more reliable. And you know that he always has the touchdown upside. You know, that's where he's made his hay in the past. So Tunyon, to me, would be the the number one tight end pickup uh, over Dawson Knox. I'll be very curious to see what happens with Tunyon this week because he has ping-ponged his relevance at times this year, going from seven targets to two targets. Uh, this was a big week coming back against the, um, the Jets. Oh, man. And... Uh, so he's interesting. Greg Dulcich, are you interested in big Greg D? I, I am. I mean, Russell Wilson, notwithstanding, but look at the numbers, 
41 snaps for Greg Dulcich, 27 routes run. And he's like, humongous. So oh, he's he's humongous. He's fast. That the catch on the broken coverage, which turned into the touchdown, was I thought very smooth for for a tight end, a rookie tight end to be running a, a basically a nine route, get the turnaround grab. We've seen that so many times with other tight ends where they catch it, they stumble, they they fall down, they just they don't maintain speed. So. It was nice to see that from him, but like I was saying, 27 routes run, and that's compared to, you know, Jerry Judy was at 32. So Greg D was a full-time player for the full-time pass catching option for the Broncos. In his first, in his first game. NFL game. So I, I, Albert, I, I, yeah. I think you can be interested in Greg Dulcich. And a Albert lot of people o was inactive because of Greg D. Yeah, I mean, Albert O was, was kind of phased out even beforehand. They, he is not someone to, to worry about for Greg Dulcich's value. You're really just worried about the Broncos' offense and whether or not Russell can, can get it going. But, I mean, when you have a chance to draft Gardner Minshew's father at tight end, <laughs> you take it. You just you take it and you, you, know, you put him on your roster. You see his press conference apparel? A short shorts, what, after baby. the game? Yeah, no, before. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he yes. says they're called shorts for a reason. I love, I love it, man. <laughs> I mean, he, he's standing there and he's got. Uh, he, he looks like he belongs. He's like Billy from uh, Stranger Things or something. His thighs are out, man. And um, totally. He, oh yeah, yeah. His okay. socks okay. are his socks are all the way up. He's wearing the. Uh, he's his own thing, man. He is. It's good, Gardner Minshew's father. Uh, what about Kate Otten? Kate Otten is is actually pretty interesting because uh, you you saw talking about rookie tight ends. There's three. Yeah, Kate that, Otten, Daniel Bellinger, and Greg Dulcich. What is, are we doing? That is not. This is where we are. Normal. Stinking um, tight ends, man. <laughs> and and I, I will say this: because they are rookies, you're not going to be relying on them, and they they are not going to come out in the rest of the season. Just have ten targets a game and be a super reliable fantasy asset. Greg but they have might. they have opportunities ahead of them. Uh, in their specific offenses, with Kate Otten, he's the rookie uh, tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You had Cameron Brait go down to a concussion, a really severe-looking concussion that is a multiple uh, concussion problem for him. So he's going to be out for an extended period of time. Kate Otten, uh, in his last opportunity without uh, without Cameron Brait, I believe had seven targets, was very involved in the offense. And this is an offense you want a piece of personally. Like Hunter Henry is someone I would be more confident in over the rookies. The rookies are exciting because of the unknown. But Hunter Henry's got a career of being good. He had a bunch of targets with Zappy. He was good last year with Johnny Smith had a fifty something yard play in that game. Johnny Smith, I think, was like three. Uh, what he barely played. Uh, I agree. Obviously, I mean, I'm not debating. You agree with what happened? I'm not debating that. <laughs> you he agree had that he a, did that? I'm not debating that he I had a catch. I did not see it. <laughs> so therefore, no. I'm just making the point. He played. He he yeah. wasn't. Out, he was out for the previous games. It can. It's a high risk, high reward with all of these guys. Obviously, yes. So, just mentioning he's back out there. No, which it is good to know he was back out there because two weeks ago he was missing, and Hunter Henry had a pretty uh, decent, decent metrics behind the scenes. This game, Johnu was back, and Johnu was in for forty three percent of snaps, two targets. Hunter Henry was much more involved. I mean, he basically was a full time player, ninety seven percent of snaps, seven targets. And he got the touchdown. Yep. And then if you're like if one of your if your starting tight end is on bye this week, the smash glass Evan Ingram, he will always be there for you to get you a few points. Would you play Dulcich over Ingram though for the chance of something better? I, probably. And okay. I mean, if I'm targeting off the waiver wire, the Greg's chance of becoming something larger by the end of the year is can't get bigger than can't get bigger than greg d no he's a monster he's a, he's a he's a man's man yeah yeah let's dive into what team defenses we're welcoming into the fold for the upcoming week who do you want to pick up uh i had stashed the dolphins in our league of record a week early nice taking work. on pittsburgh who right now the report is if Pickett is cleared he will be the quarterback i can't imagine but could be difficult, especially taking a chance with their uh, with it, a rookie. It's it's a rookie. It doesn't matter to me though. I'd still play the Dolphins' defense. Yeah, but but here's the bigger part. Pittsburgh is Sunday night. Everybody will be watching. The NFL cannot have a concu a guy who got a concussion last week at the quarterback position come and have another prime time concussion. I don't. I think it's 
very low odds that pick. That plays. doesn't change whether you play the Dolphins. No, right? no, 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 okay. not at all. I I don't know who I'd rather yeah, have. I, was I say, don't know. I don't care. <laughs> That's great. What well, you? I was get, just laying it out. User's choice. You, uh, you pick who you want. We'll we'll take on Trubisky or Pickett. The Patriots, if they're out there, yep. need to be the number one pickup. They play the Bears. Um, Justin Fields is a delight if you are a defense. He takes sacks he shouldn't take. He throws the ball at the places he shouldn't throw it when he gets the chance to. The only thing that will hurt you is his legs. Yeah, I, I would love to play the Patriots. I'm also seeing that the Dallas Cowboys are rostered in 62% of leagues. Wow. The Dallas Cowboys should be rostered in 100% of leagues. I agree. They are one of those defenses that is so good that – you hold them through their bye, which is coming in three weeks. In the meantime, the Detroit Lions, Chicago Bears, I would, you know, play uh, play Dallas no problem. The sneaky start this week. Yeah, it is. Is the J -E -T -S. Jets. J-E-T-S. I mean, you're playing against Russell Wilson. I don't think it's sneaky. <laughs> it's in your face. Yeah. The Broncos offense is bad. And the Jets defense has looked pretty darn good. Yeah. They've they've been scoring for fantasy purposes. They just went to Lambeau and had a good outing. And so You can play both sides of that game. Denver at home, their defense has sure. been outstanding. They don't give up passing touchdowns. Brees could be a problem. I would much rather have the Denver Broncos defense. If both of them are available fire up the Broncos because I know the Jets they're on a hot streak they're looking great Brees is unstoppable but you still have Zach Wilson that's going to be throwing the ball probably to some Broncos all right that was welcome to the fold presented by Samsung Galaxy with Galaxy Z Fold 4 unfold an immersive screen to watch games in full detail and maximize your viewing experience on the go visit samsung.com to learn more Full stream ahead. Look, Mike is a wild man. Yeah. He's I, a wild man. I we're, told him not to do it. We're, I, going, we're going for it today, fellas. Well, I'm going to save it till the end. Okay. Okay. Just so that our, our segment maintains credibility. I will. Jason, go ahead. I'll hop in here first. I have Jalen Hurts in the League of Record. <laughs> I thought that. No, yeah, that's my streaming candidate. I know he's on by, but for a minute, I thought that was your guy. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I have Jalen Hurts. He is on by. Yes. So, personally, I picked up Derek Carr to stream him against Houston. This is who I am rolling with. So, I figure if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you. The Raiders are seven-point home favorites against the Texans. And Carr's been serviceable. Good for the goose, good for the gander. Isn't yeah. that the phrase? That, yeah. that is a phrase. That is a phrase. What, what, what's a gander? I imagine it's a, group a pack of, of A group of geese. Of geese? Uh, is that right? I'm seeing geese is a gander. Uh, Kyle, Kyle has to know this. So Kyle, I can take a gander at gander. You oh. could gander at a gander. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's, it's like how Kyle has no idea. Pack, He's looking down. A pack of crows is Google is a confused. Just, Google doesn't a, even know what a gander what's is. What's a pack of geese? Yeah, just Google that. Pack of geese. That's got to be a gander, right? It's a gaggle. Oh, it's a gaggle. <laughs> oh, of course a, it is. A gander is a male goose. Oh, so there's a gander and a gaggle. Oh. Presumably, I mean, Wait, it could so all be female. So what's a saying, female goose? I don't know. What's a, hold on, hold on. Let's okay, let's go back to where the okay. phrase comes from. If it's good enough for the goose, it's good enough for the gander. That means it's good enough for the male goose. Is the goose the the lady goose? Uh, we need some effort. That's from, mother dude. goose. <laughs> mother goose is all female geese. All right. Are hey, mother goose. If, the deuce. Figure out the goose. All right. Uh, Derek Carr against Houston is Jason's streamer. I'm going with Jimmy G. Uh taking on Kansas City. You you Kansas City is I believe the second highest scoring team in the in the league. They're going to get it figured out. San Francisco just came off a defeat uh of embarrassing proportions and they're going to need to throw the football. Jimmy G was a streamer last week, ended up the quarterback 9. Kansas City's allowed 15 passing touchdowns, just intercepted one pass in the last 6 weeks. So I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a good start if you are, as I am, benching Josh Allen and, and putting. That's not that's not a nice way to say it. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm, I'm going to bench him because he's not playing, which is on him. Right. So looking at the phrase, man, it's, it is. It's just about equality. What is good for a man is equally good for a woman. That's what good for the goose is good for yeah. the gander means? Yeah, that comes from the early. Because a female goose? comes from the earlier proverb, what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Oh, that makes yeah. total sense. Okay, yeah. got it. Saucy. We figured it if out. If something is good for one person, it should be equally as good for another person. So yes. Jason starting Derek Carr, that should be equally good 
for all of the ganders out there. That's right. Take a gander at Derek Carr is what I'm saying. Also, speaking of saucy Mike, yeah, the what, stage what, is yours. What what may not be good for your mental health heading into the weekend, but <laughs> turn the music I off. I know. I'm sorry. Because this this is what streaming quarterbacks is. If they are this player is widely available, we're talking about 90% of sleeper leagues be, it should be a hundred percent. Not because he's coming off of his bye, but because he's been pretty uh, uh, bad, pretty pretty bad. Some serviceable performances, but it is General Mills of the Houston Texans. Looking at the Stream Finder tool, the Raiders are dead last in fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. If you adjust for schedule, they are dead last. They're the points they are giving up above expectation to the quarterback position, it is a massive, massive gap between QB1, er, er, uh, the defense against number ones, and QB2. I messed up that saying, but the point is the gotcha. Raiders are bleeding points to the quarterback position. So if you are in a – if you're hurting, your quarterback is on by, your league stashes all the QB2s, Davis Mills – has a shot to come through here for with with a very usable week. He is definitely available for you. And I will say this, while <laughs> this year he has done nothing, there were four games last year where he was a top 10 quarterback. So if you want to try to pick one of the four games or one of the one games this year where he's a <laughs> top 10 quarterback, this would be the week. And I I presume he will have a good game for him. The question is just is a good game for him good enough for fantasy TBD, Mike says it is. Yep. Mike, I hope he's in your DraftKings lineup. Why didn't you go with Matty Matty Ryan? Uh, well, supply and pity city. He he could, but the game plan of they're going to throw it fifty plus times was very to me very Jonathan Taylor related, and I I think Taylor's this is a be bet back. against the Raiders. This is not necessarily one hundred percent. It's a bet against the Raiders. Got it. All right, uh, no more gander talk. Are we done with that? Can we wrap this thing up? Yes. All right, that'll do it. <laughs> uh, Kyle never made eye contact with me that entire time. He had no idea what that he phrase meant. He didn't gander your direction? No, he didn't. All right, that'll do it. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. Go to thefantasyfootballers.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.